Hello and welcome to George Accounts. Today we're going to be working on reporting accomplishments for an issue in the system. This is not a tutorial on how to create a new issue. If you've never created an issue in George Accounts before, we have another video for that. Um, but this one is if you already have an existing issue and you're ready to report your accomplishments for the year. You will begin by logging into George Accounts. If you do not have a UGA My ID, click the standard login link to be taken to the traditional George Accounts screen. If you have a UGA My ID, click the Proceed to My ID login. Once you're logged into George Accounts, select the Planning link from the left side navigator bar. On the planning page, you'll see a list of issues that you're tied to. So pay special attention to the editor column. It may be that there's an issue in here that you did not create that someone else created and made you a collaborator for. You cannot respond to or edit those issues, only the ones where you're the editor. Go ahead and select the issue you want to report accomplishments for. If your issue is in the response requested status, when you open it, you will see several boxes at the top of the screen. Uh, these boxes are here to help you navigate what needs to be done as you're reporting accomplishments. So let's scroll back up to the top of this list and get started. Each of these boxes represents a section in the issue that has not yet been responded to. So these boxes are going to disappear as we go down the list and respond to each section. So at the end of this exercise, we should have no boxes left at the top. Um, let's start with the first one, which is uh, respond to actual situations and priorities. Go ahead and click the link. This first section is fairly easy. If your project was well defined in the beginning, you probably won't have anything to add here. Uh, this is just if, if there was a change in the situation and it changed the priorities on your project, you're going to note that here. Or if you made an assumption um, that was incorrect, you can note that here, but otherwise you can just put no change. Then click the Submit Changes button. This will bring you back to the main page, and now you can see how we're just going to work our way down this list. So we're going to click the FTEs link. You're going to want to put the total number of FTEs that were um, done related to this project. That's full-time equivalent, so that's the amount of time that you spent working. One FTE is 100% of your time, so if you spent, let's say you have a joint appointment, you're half research, half extension, you would, and you're spending all your time on this issue, then you would put 0.5 FTEs in research and 0.5 FTEs in extension. If you have multiple people working on the project, you're going to want to total up all of the FTEs and put them together um, for one grand total in each area. So enter your FTEs and then click the Submit Changes button. Okay, back to the top of the screen, and now we're going to select um, Program Methods and select all the program methods that you actually use. You can see the list above shows the ones that you said you were planning on using. Now we're just saying what was actually done. Then click the Submit Changes button. Now we see that box has disappeared and we're moving on to the next section. So let's click on the link what was actually done. This takes you to the activity section. So you can see above where it says uh, what will be done, and that's what you had entered whenever you created your issue, saying what types of activities were going to take place. Now it's time for you to respond to that and say what was actually done. This is a very important part of the report. This is your actual meat and potatoes of what was done. Uh, we're not going to get into your outcomes here. We're not going to get into your evaluation findings, just what you actually did. And you want to be as detailed as possible, but keep it concise. We only have limited space on the report, and we want to make sure that we highlight uh, all of our accomplishments. And then once you're finished with that section, click the Submit Changes button. Next, we'll enter Contact Targets. So contacts are touch points for any time we engage with our clientele. Um, 
your direct contacts are going to be things like um, face-to-face presentation contacts, the number of participants in a program that you presented, phone calls, emails. If you keep up with that, you can tally all of those together and put that under your direct contacts. Indirect contacts are things like uh, website hits, uh, newsletter distribution, so not where you're directly engaging with someone, but you are sharing information with them, and you can in a trackable way. So you'll go ahead and put in your numbers for each of those categories and click the Submit Changes button. Next on the list are sessions. The first column is the number of sessions that you presented to faculty or staff, so however many agent trainings you did. And the next box are presentations or workshops that you did directly with clientele. Then click the Submit Changes button. Moving on to peer-reviewed publications. These are strictly your uh, formerly peer-reviewed pubs. We do not count extension bulletins, even though they are peer-reviewed internally. We don't count those here. We count them in the next section. Um, so don't put those in there, but any journal articles you've written, uh, peer-reviewed, you can put that in here. Then click the Submit Changes button. Now for other significant publications. And this is where you're going to put extension bulletins and any other publications that you did that weren't peer-reviewed. Then click Submit Changes. Invited Presentations and just enter your total number for the year and click Submit Changes. And since this is a research project, we have the Patent section. First, we want to put in the names of the patents, enter the title, then click the Insert button to add it. You should then see it on your list. So you can go down and type in another patent and click insert to add another one. Or you can go up to your um, total overall number. Enter the total number of patents for the year. And then click the submit changes button to finish up the patent section. If you created any custom output measures when you created your issue, you'll have this link. And you'll see all the custom output measures you created. Enter responses for all of those and click the Respond to Output Measures button. Now it's time to get into our outcomes and reporting on those measures that you created for short term, medium term, and long term. You want to make sure that you have your uh, information, your data there handy for you. It'll make it go by a lot quicker. So go ahead and click on the Short Term Outcomes link. That's going to bring you to your short-term outcomes that you created. So if you created one, it'll be here. If you created five, they'll be here. And this is where you'll enter that quantitative data. Once you're done, click the Respond to Outcome Measures button. We can see that list continuing to shrink. So let's go ahead and click on Medium Term Outcome Measures. Just do the same thing again. Then click the Respond to Outcome Measures button. Okay, on to the Long-Term Outcome Measures link. Now keep in mind these Long-Term Outcome Measures are big change items, so they may take a while to happen. Uh, if your project is new, you may not see any changes yet. That's fine. You can report zeros. Just um, go in there and report something for us. Click the Respond to Outcome Measures button. Now select External Factors. Check the box beside All External Factors that Impacted Your Issue This Year. Then click the Submit Changes button. Now we can go into a little bit more detail about those external factors. Click the Explanation of External Factors button and type in details about how those external factors impacted the outcomes of your issue and then click the Submit Changes button. Just a few more sections to go. Click on Evaluation Methods. Above you'll see the uh, evaluation studies that you planned on using. Go ahead and check which ones were actually used. Then click Submit Changes. 
Now click the Summarize and Highlight Evaluation Findings link. This is where you're going to highlight your evaluation or your research findings. So we really want to bring to the surface any um, comments that your participants made. You can include those here, um, test scores, uh, commitment to adopt new practices. This is where we'll outline all of that. When you're all done, click the Submit Changes button. Select the Impact Statement link. This is where you're really going to pack a punch and use just a couple of sentences to tell everyone the impact that your program has had. So a few things to keep in mind. The audience for this report is the general public. Um, keep it brief. We're combining lots of programs together, so we want to make sure that we get everyone included. Um, and be sure to highlight your economic, environmental, and quality of life impact that your work has done. Once you've finished that short impact statement, click the Submit Changes button. Click the How Was the Extension Use link and detail any um, involvement that you had with eExtension with this issue, how many communities of practice you had, members, leaders, how many questions were answered, any of that information that you have. And click the Submit Changes button and click your last area, Collaborative Efforts. And this is where we really want to highlight any efforts that you've had working with other institutions, whether they be other universities or nonprofits, governing bodies. Um, any work that we've done across institutions is good to highlight. And click the Submit Changes button. Okay, now you've finished responding to your issue. You just need to change the status to submit it. Go ahead and click on the Change Status link and select Submit Response. Then click the Change Status button. And Georgia Counts knows that you're not going to be able to edit or change any of your responses once you confirm this action. So it just wants to double check and make sure. So click the Confirm Action button. And you'll get a little message at the top that says it was uh, the action was successfully performed. So you're all finished until next year. Thanks. And um, if you have any questions, feel free to give me a call. I can be reached at 706-542-8837, or you can email me sunny at uga.edu.